So right now, I have 88 songs on my Music Monday playlist. And over the last two years of recording these songs, every Monday basically, I have learned so many interesting things about recording, about performing, and about the songwriting process. So I wanted to share some of that stuff with you today because I think it's valuable. And uh, if you can sit through me talking, a little bit of demoing with my guitar here, uh, I think you're gonna learn some good stuff today. So the first thing I wanna talk about, okay, is picks. Picks, picks, picks on the acoustic guitar or the electric guitar or the bass. Um, one of the things I've learned is how much I love extra light picks or light picks. In the past, I hated them. I would never use them. But that's because I was a performer and I was playing out live a lot where these really don't, for me, work very well because they don't uh, project enough volume out of the instrument. They're very light and it's hard to get loud if you need to get loud with these. However, in the recording studio, that is really not a big problem, okay? So if you are somebody that writes music or plays music like me, and if you watch Music Monday, you should know kind of what I'm about musically. A lot of times I'm just doing things like this. Right? I'm keeping it simple. I mean, even that little in between. I don't do that all that much. Most of the time I'm really just going. Right? I'm keeping it simple rhythmically. But the nice thing about light picks is that they are super forgiving, right? So they move, they bend a lot, which the hard picks obviously don't do nearly as much. So what the nice thing about that is in the recording process is if there's a stray strum, right? If something happens and you catch a string the wrong way, with a light pick, it kind of never matters. Like your hand, just it doesn't get slowed down because the pick just gives away, okay? So that's really nice from a performance standpoint. The other thing that's really nice is how much high end you're able to get out of an acoustic guitar when you use the light picks, okay? So let me do this. I'm just gonna play with the, the darker pick, or the darker pick, that's what I call them. Uh, the thicker pick here, right? So this is the, the thick pick. Light pick. So it's a very, very, actually I don't think it's a very subtle change. I think it's a pretty dramatic change in guitar tone there. The light pick gets you that high end that you really do want out of a strummy rhythmic guitar part. So that's it. I have made other videos about this and I will leave a link for that video below about, you know, like where I actually go through every single Dunlop pick and let you hear how different they sound from, you know, each gauge. Uh, but long story short, light picks rock for electric guitar, acoustic guitar, and electric bass, especially if you're, especially if you're doing like, like, you know, eighth notes, 16th notes, whatever, uh, light picks are great on bass, okay? Enough of that. The next thing I wanna talk about is singing, okay? So this is really interesting to me, and I have made a video about this, how to sing in the recording studio, but I wanna talk about it again. One of the things that I've really learned is the importance of breathing technique, good posture, breathing, you know, like breathing from my diaphragm, standing up straight, shoulders back, doing some vocal warm ups before I start recording, things like that. What happens when you start doing those things and making them part of your regular practice, you know, rehearsing your voice like it is an instrument, yeah? Uh, you got to remember your voice is an instrument and it, you should practice and you should rehearse and you should do your warm ups and all these things. It's, you know, it's not a guitar with frets. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is though, when you are recording and you are following those things I just mentioned, what I end up with is much more even recordings. Okay. So there's not these like huge peaks and valleys unless there needs to be in the performance. Of course, if there's a quiet part of the song that I will get quieter, but if there's a louder part, I can get louder. However, the majority of a song is, you know, in the verses where there are sometimes not that many dynamics happening in a verse, right? But what it does require is a nice, even tone and volume out of your voice. 
Okay, so I'm also gonna talk about like the P's, the T's, the S's, you know, all those consonant sounds, all those sounds that become problematic in the mixing stage. These are things that tend to have a little bit more volume, right? So one thing you can do is really just start reining it in with your mouth, right? You don't need to be like the people were whatever, right? A lot of people, oh gosh, the mixes I get and the overload of air into the microphone, even with a pop filter. You know, pop filters are great, but they don't fix everything. What you can do though, is control it yourself as you are performing that part, right? So just remember, you don't need to expel so much air on a P sound or a T sound can be really soft in your tongue. Like you don't have to be so on the tip of your tongue with it. You can soften those sounds. So that's just something I want to recommend. Sing, you know, evenly try to do your breathing techniques. Look up videos on how to do those. If you don't know, breathe from your diaphragm, get good at those things. Also proximity effect to the microphone. This is something else I've been experimenting with more lately. Uh, you know, if it's a soft, easy song, being up close to the microphone is a really good way to go because you get that proximity effect, which enhances low end um, and the warmth of the overall track, okay? So just remember, breathing techniques, try to subdue your P's and T's and S's or you know whatever it may be, just try to subdue those sounds as you are singing them, okay? Next up, electric bass. Something I've really been enjoying lately, and I've never actually talked about this on my channel, and uh, you guys don't know that I've been doing this a lot lately, but I have stopped, not stopped, but I, I have been using the amp sims a lot less inside of GarageBand or Logic. I still use both. I still use both all the time. I recorded on GarageBand yesterday for a client. What I have started to do is really learn how to work a direct bass sound, right? So if I'm just going from my bass to my interface and I just open up a regular instrument track there on GarageBand. I don't open up an amp sim, I open up a compressor in EQ and that's usually about it. Sometimes I'll use that quad compressor, um, but most of the time it's just a basic compressor and a basic EQ. And I have been super happy with those direct input signals coming out of my bases. So that was it. Don't always have to use the amp sim. You might wanna try that out. You get a totally interesting tone and uh, it seems to be a little bit more authentic to me because I know it's a popular thing and you know when you're using the simulated amps you're simulating but if you're going to go direct in and just work that particular signal it seems to be a little bit more authentic sounding to me it's also a bigger sound I think a lot of times um yeah so that's it just remember hey direct bass sounds are cool so the last thing I want to talk about really revolves around songwriting the inner critic which I've talked about a lot and um the fact that you, as a songwriter, probably really don't know what is a good song or not, as far as like the audience is concerned. So what I'm trying to say is this, I have over these 88 songs, over these two years, I have released several songs that I personally don't really like. Funny thing is, is that you people have written comments that say things like, this is the best song you've ever written. And that has happened several times. Okay, so that was really weird. Then on the other side of that is I release songs that I personally really love, like the song I released last week, which is called Through Thin Walls. And overall, the reaction is sort of underwhelming. It's weird to me, but what I've realized, because this has happened so many times, is that I can't tell what songs that I'm writing are good or not. As far as the audience response to it is, I have no clue. I cannot tell if the song I'm writing is good or not, honestly. So what I've decided to do is write all of them and release all of them. And that is what I have been doing. So I wanted to recommend to you guys, if you are in the middle or maybe you got a couple of songs in the can that you don't like, I highly recommend you go back, finish those songs and release them. I think you will experience what I have experienced where it's like, well, people actually love that song. That's crazy to me. It made me so much more confident about releasing those songs. Like, I know I still don't like this song, but I have a feeling people are going to like it. You know, I can't tell. I just write the songs. And, you know, I've talked about this in the songwriting video I made, but it's, it's that whole theory of songwriting where, you know, the songs exist in the air, in the ether, whatever it may be and I'm just a conduit as a writer. So I can translate that stuff into music that people can hear. But I'm not the one, quote unquote, writing the songs. You know what I mean? Like these songs are just here. I capture it and turn it into something people can listen to. 
It releases me of a lot of responsibility, and I love that. It makes it so much easier, like, well, I didn't write it. I just, I just caught it and turned it into something you could listen to. It's sort of a funny perspective on it, but it's totally true, I think, you know? Again, I've been doing this for two years, 88 songs released in two years. I mean, I don't know how many albums, I mean, call it eight or nine albums that could be or you know, even more if they were just EPs, right? Point is though, that you guys out there, you guys and girls out there who might have songs that you just genuinely don't like, my advice is to finish it, record it, and release it with all the confidence that you would a song you love that you've written, okay? Um, you know, the overall point, like why do we do this? Why do we make music? And, and what is the point of it all? You know, this is a conversation I've had with friends of mine. I'm starting to realize that it really truly is. If, if I can give somebody a minute and a half of their life where they get that experience of like, hey, this is a new song I've never heard and I really like it. You know that feeling? Do you know that feeling? It's truly magical. It, 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 the, the stress of the world tends to go away for those three and a half minutes or whatever it may be. And it's really, really nice. And if that's something that one of my songs can do for a listener, hey man, I consider that a big, big win, you know? Um, I, I don't want to upset anybody with my music, but if it can give them that feeling, you know? It's such a wonderful thing to be able to share with people, is music, and just to be able to give them an escape, even if it's for those three minutes where they relax, their heart rate might go down, might go up, depends on the song, but where they get into it, where they get that, that magical feeling of hearing a brand new song for the first time and falling in love with it, or being like, mm, maybe this is interesting, I'm not quite convinced, I'm gonna listen to it again, and second listen, third listen, they start to really like it, and then they listen to it a bunch of times. The whole process is so fascinating to me, and I just think, you know, as songwriters, we have this really important and really precious gift to give to the regular listeners out there, you know? I mean, they are equally as important as us. We need the listeners as musicians, as songwriters, we need listeners. So do not undervalue or underestimate their role in the exchange, okay? Um, you listeners out there, you viewers are, you know, what keep GarageBand and Beyond happening. You know, same kind of example, same kind of idea there. So I think that about wraps it up for what I wanna talk about, you know? Um, I just wanna say thank you so much to everybody who watches the Music Monday videos. It is so much fun for me to make those and I love doing it. It is by far my favorite part of my week is Music Monday. And it's super, super taxing and very difficult sometimes, but um, I love it. I just love recording music. I love using GarageBand. Yes, I've been using Logic more these days, um, but I still do on a daily basis use GarageBand. So don't worry, I'm still using it. It still rocks, it's still good. Uh, just remember those things I talked about, light picks, um, direct input on the bass and uh, songwriting stuff. Like you and I, as songwriters, we don't know what people like. It's just impossible to know. It's impossible to know what everybody's gonna like or dislike. So write them all, release them to the world because all that means is that there's more music in the world and that is an awesome thing. So go do that, all right, you guys? Hey. Uh, I don't ever say this on my channel much anymore, but you know, there is a subscribe button, which I would really appreciate because I'm getting pretty close to 92,000 subscribers. I'm really working for that 100,000. And uh, you gotta hit that notification bell. Please hit the notification bell. Uh, so you know when the videos come out because otherwise YouTube doesn't let you know. And because the system is slow and I have like friends who live in my building who are like, I didn't know you put out a video and I'm subscribed. I'm like, yeah, you gotta hit that notification bell. <laughs> so that's it, hit it. And um, you guys, otherwise, I hope you got something interesting out of this video. And I hope that you have a great weekend. And I hope that you make lots of great music and have lots of fun with your friends. And peace and love.